In the land of Chicago, we take pride in our pizza and our hot dogs. But not many people know of our third secret, burgers. Kuma's Corner is on the very top of the list when it comes to tasting the juiciest, thickest, and meanest burger there is. Kuma's Corner has six locations, two of them out of state, but today we are visiting the newest location in West Loop. Hey, how, how are, are you? you? I'm Tia. I'm Carlo. How, how are, are you, Tommy? Nick? Nice to meet, to meet you guys. guys. You guys want to check the place out? Yeah. Come on in. And this is our main dining room. So this is kind of like the main event in here. You can open these beautiful windows to get a nice look out of Fulton Market. Um, you know, spring, summer, fall, this is just like the place to be. One of the cool things about this location is how malleable it is. We often do special and private events in that section as well. Okay. We've got these curtains that we can kind of close nice. and make it kind of, you know, nice and cozy. Yeah. So one thing you'll see, you know, as you walk through the space is a lot of artwork that's either done by you know, employees or local artists, something that we just kind of like to feature um, to have something to talk about, you know, the folks that are doing things that are kind of parallel, you know, in the creative industry. Our chalkboards here that feature the Burger of the Month and Mac of the Month, all done in-house, you know, by employees. So it's a cool way to kind of, you know, engage our staff in a different way and get them to kind of talk about their own creativity as well. We have our own gin, rum, and vodka. We do these with a, a local distillery. Um, and the great thing is, once again, you know, the artwork is all done in-house. On a Friday, Saturday night, or really any day over the summer, we've got four chefs back here just cranking stuff through, full window of tickets. I mean, it's intense, but a lot of fun. This is our tin tack wall. So we are trying to get as many uh, craft beer companies as possible to give us some tin tacks and kind of feature like all of the, the beers that we enjoy having here as well. So you'll see some local stuff, some you know, not local things, but um, you know, again, just different ways that we can kind of advertise the folks that we really enjoy kind of do that, like, you know, collaborative promotion. This place is incredible. I can see the character, you know, and I, I would love to hear more about your story about Kuma's Corner. Kuma's Corner started as a fine dining restaurant, and after about a year, um, my brother realized that burgers were selling, so we, uh, he loved metal music, so we okay. decided to play all metal music and name the burgers after metal bands. What is Akuma? Like, I never heard that word before. So Kuma means uh, bear in Japanese, and my brother had an Akita named Kuma. And oh, wow. so he originally named the restaurant Raven's Corner, but there's another Raven's Bar on Clark Street. So mm -hmm. he got a cease and desist and changed it to uh, his dog's name after, named after his dog, Kuma. What is Kuma's Corner connection to the community? When we established our Avondale location, it was to try and build a foundation for that local community. Mm -hmm. um, my brother had worked in the restaurant industry his whole life and decided that he wanted to own his own place. And so that's kind of where it took off and then no advertising or marketing, everything is strictly word of mouth and recognition from um, publications and what have you. So tell us, what do you love about Chicago? Um, first of all, it's the food capital of the United States. Sure. It was recognized as culinary and best culinary city in the, in the, in the country. And also just the, the gritty, blue collar work ethic. And of course, uh, Chicagoans love metal music and there's a huge metal community in Chicago, so. Yeah. The food and the metal community, for sure. A lot of it, a lot of the reason why we work with so many bands is just because they've always just hung out at Kumas. Sure. Like the OG Kumas was where bands like the local Chicago metal scene would be, and then touring bands would come through. We've had any, anywhere from like super small, tiny local like grind metal bands all the way okay. up to Lady Gaga. Uh -huh. So like, and everybody in between. We would do charities of the month where oh. we would give portion of the proceeds from our Burgers of the Month or sales of some sort um, to the charity. Yep. Um, we were big into supporting, like there's Rant Park that's right behind the original location. It's like a block away where we were gonna have our 15 year anniversary celebration. Yeah. And we give away school supplies for kids there. We give away hams at you know, Christmas. We do a lot of other things just to try and you know, support the community and those in need, for sure. Can you tell us how Kuma's Corner has adapted to COVID-19? We were very restricted on what we were allowed to do. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we started out just doing to-go. So we revamped okay. our entire to-go and, and focused on trying to be, like, make sure that our food that was going to be delivered to the house was going to show up hot and was going to look at sure. just like it would in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And we wanted that food quality to be the same. Okay. Um, so we focused on that. And as the regulations kind of led up, we did everything that we could to have outdoor dining. We kept these domes and like these greenhouses that we put heaters in in order to accommodate people, which actually really, really helped bring in some extra business. 
Um, and then, yeah, I mean, as things lighten up, we have to separate all of our tables by six feet and make sure everybody follows the regulations. But we're doing everything by the book and we make sure that all of our staff is, a, is on top of everything, keeping everything nice and clean so that way all of our guests can dine in without any fear of COVID. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is my dream right now, to be <laughs> honest. The very first one we have right in front are the jalapeno poppers. It has just a chorizo and mm -hmm. cheese, and then it has that raspberry jam on the side to dip in. That jam mm. paired with the jalapeno poppers. I never thought that would be a good combination, but it's very fitting. It's great. Yeah, it's very balanced and sweet and spicy. Yeah, and then you can see the cheese inside. Yeah, just oozing out, yep. and it's really good, really creamy. Um, the jalapeno is not overbearing, I don't know why. Right, yeah. And then we have, you know, this big bowl of mac and cheese, which that just looks appetizing oh. as is. Holy cow. How heavy is this bowl? Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, all it's that cheese. Baked cheese. Wow. You can see right here. You could share this with like six people. Oh, definitely. That's so good. The ratio of noodle to cheese is just perfect. It's not too cheesy. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you get mac and cheese and just, it's very creamy. It's too much, all you, right. All you can taste is cheese. But the, I think they toasted the top. Mm hmm it gives yeah. a little crunch. Mm hmm And I really like these green onions on top. I'll just stick with this the rest of the meal. <laughs> this is so good. And then right here is the mastodon. It has that frizzled onion on the top, barbecue sauce, um, cheddar, and then your 10-ounce patty with fries on the side. Oh kind my gosh. Kind of looks gosh. like a like a pretzel bun. Yeah, I love pretzel buns. <laughs> you you can see the barbecue it. sauce <laughs> kind of oozing off to the side right there. Oh my goodness, that is messy. Oh my god. Yeah. Best burger I've ever had. And here I have the sour vein, which is a burger, so it has a 10-ounce patty, but on top. It's topped with bacon, some cheese, blackened chicken. You can see um, some waffle pieces here and a little bit of uh, maple syrup mm -hmm. with fries. Oh my, this might even bigger. Look at this compared to your burger. Oh yeah, right? I'm having. <laughs> like you got best of both worlds. You got I'm chicken, so you, got, good. you got a beef patty. I mean, who doesn't want a pretzel bun and waffles on the same bite, right? And this is the famous Kumas burger, um, 10 ounce patty. You can see the bacon, the egg right on top, lettuce, tomato, red onion. That is, um, I guess, the OG burger, which I'm really excited to For try. For sure, and some homemade chips on the side homemade that chips, they make like, here. Of course. Yep. This looks like the Krabby Patty in real life. Okay. That's cooked to perfection. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. That's so good. It's just a like a very plastic style burger. Mm -hmm. Just take it to the very next level. Right. And it, I think it really Superior. it really just begins with that beef patty. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just amazed by the size. Rank your burger. I've had the Kuma's burger before, uh -huh. and it's always good. But it's nice to try something new. So I think today I have to rate the Mastodon as the first, and then the Sour Vein second. Uh huh. I would say the Kuma's burger is your staple, but it mm -hmm. it doesn't go to that next level where it has those different type of toppings on it as yeah. the other burgers. What about you? I think I like the sour vein because it's it's kind of pushing limits. Yeah. You know, literally in size, and you're just so protein filled, packed. I mean, you hear chicken and waffles, you don't hear a chicken yeah. waffle burger. And then so it has that raspberry. It's definitely the you know it's on the outside that people's like whoa, sure. and you know they're just so intrigued. Um, I think both these burgers are named after bands too, right? Right. That's really cool. Yep. Keeping the music theme in Kuma's Corner. Keeping it alive. Yeah. I like that. Cheers, Cheers to, to Kuma's, Kuma's Corner. Corner.